The Ida Neck Wrap is this little scarf I'm wearing right here, and I've named it the Ida Neck Wrap because my great-great-aunt Ida, the woman who taught me to knit when I was a little girl, used to make little things like this for my sisters and I. And I didn't really think much of it at the time, but something little around your neck like this, even indoors, makes a huge difference in how warm you stay throughout the day. Uh, it is a little thing with kind of petaled ends, and one end tucks inside the other. And the techniques that we use on this are pretty unique from a lot of other things you'll see. Um, in this video, I'm going to get you started with, the, with using the needles in the very few stitches that we start with, and we'll go through all of the steps of the little scarf in, in these few videos. Okay, to start out with, you want to have these giant needles, and I'm going to use double-pointed needles. It's not essential that you use double-pointed needles, but I like it because it's short and we won't have very many stitches cast on at once. You can either use bulky yarn or double strands of worsted. And I want to show you this. This is you know, a plain brown and this variegated blue and green color. This is really plain. This is maybe too bright for something I would normally wear, but look at this magic. When you combine them together, look how pretty that is. The brown tones down, the brights, and the brights make the brown happier. Anyway, so I'm going to use double stranded for this one. Oh, if you want to follow along with the pattern we're using here, it's available over on my website. The pattern starts us out by casting on just a couple of stitches. And when you hold two strands together, you're going to line them up and hold them like this and treat them like they're one strand. See, no fuss, this is really an easy thing to do. We cast on two stitches and I'll want to keep track of my rows here. Row one has me do a KFB and then knit one. KFB being knit front back and that's worked like this by doing a normal knit stitch leaving this old stitch on the left needle, swinging the tip of my needle around to the back of that stitch, wrapping it and pulling it through, and then knitting the next one. Row two has us doing the same KFB, purling one, and then a KFB again. Row three, KFB, purl one, and the pattern tells us to KTBL, which is knit through the back loop. A normal knit stitch goes in like this, KTBL goes into the back loop like this, and it's worked like a normal knit stitch from there. Oops, I'm doing a KFB here. There we go. Okay, so you can see that we're starting to see the bottom of the first petal and it's getting the shape. And here's what it looks like when it's finished. We maintain the rib and the uh, KTBLs, the knit through the back loops, make these rib stitches more prominent in the work. It's just ribbing, but the TBL makes that more prominent. You're going to follow the directions to knit up and back down, and then the next section we're going to do this tuck flap. And I'll demonstrate that in the next video. In this section, we're going to learn how to do what I'm calling the tuck flaps. These little sections of the scarf, there's one on each side, where the petal part can tuck through like this and it fastens around your neck. Now the big scary part about this is that you're going to have live, loose stitches for a moment. You're going to just yank your needles right out of your work. It's nothing to be afraid of. Let me show you. You've finished the bottom of the petal and you're up to the section now for the tuck flaps. 
<laughs> you should have. I'm laughing because I'm thinking about how people are going to freak out about this. This happens in person when I'm teaching classes. Your first stitch should be a knit stitch. And let's talk about that for a minute. When you're looking at your work, knit stitches look like V's and purl stitches look like they have a little scarf around their neck. So we have a knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl across the work. A V and a scarf. So you're, um, you should be on a row where the first stitch is a knit, the second one is a purl. Then it's facing the right direction. Now a drum roll as I pull the needle out. Nothing's going to have time to unravel. I'm going to take this needle, I'm going to pick up every other stitch. I'm going to pick up every knit stitch. And you can see they're kind of all conveniently hanging to the front. See how easy that was? Now I'm going to take the, the second needle and put it into all the purl stitches which are hanging to the back. Nothing scary, everything's picked up, no problem. Now we're going to knit the, the two flaps individually. You could put these on a piece of scrap yarn, these purl stitches, but they're going to hang out on this needle, no problem. So I'm just going to work across the stitches on the, on the front needle, and you'll follow your directions, of course, to knit the right number of rows. But I'm just going to knit across them. And I'll turn the work and purl across them. This is just plain stockinette. Okay, I think you get the idea of that. You leave those there. And then to work this side, the, what I have been calling the purl side, I'm going to um, turn the work so that they actually look like knit stitches. We just have five of them. And I'm going to take another ball of yarn. Well, actually, you know, it doesn't have to be another ball of yarn. I happen to have another little ball of these yarn because I actually, of these two yarns because I actually broke the yarn on this sample. But since we're knitting such a tiny bit, I never recommend this. You can actually work from the wrong side of the yarn. If you're pulling from the center on a cake of yarn like this or a skein, just go ahead and work from the outside and use the yarn from the outside of the ball. Like I said, I do not normally recommend this, but it's such a tiny bit of knitting, nothing will have time to really get twisted. Okay, so I have a second bit of this yarn. I'll just attach this and start knitting with it. just like I did for the other side. And I'll purl across the inside. And then when I get to that last stitch, I'm going to tie the tail end to the working yarn. These are big stitches and they can loosen up and look goofy pretty easily. So I've secured that. My working yarn is still usable. It's just secured to that and then I'll go in later and weave in those ends. Anyway, that's it. You're going to follow your pattern to finish up the tuck flaps and in the next video I'm going to show you how to close up the flaps and knit the rest of the scarf. We're now ready to close up these tuck flaps and knit the rest of the scarf, and I'm afraid I'm going to make you rip your needles out of your work again. But you did so well the first time. It's really nothing to worry about. So we've knit the tuck flap, and we have five stitches on one needle and six stitches on the other needle. And now go ahead and pull those two needles out of the work. We're going to put things back on the needles the way they were before we knit the flaps. And so I'm going to start with one of the stitches in front, Go to a stitch in back, one in front, back. These stitches are so big, they're so easy to see. It's really not a problem. See how easy that was? 
And you'll know that they're mounted on the needle if they're mounted like this, with the right leg in front. If they're backwards, if they're like this, they're backwards, they're twisted, and you can just take them off the needle and flip them around because this is the right way. And the way that I picked them up, I'm confident that all of mine are mounted correctly here. Now you just continue, let me show you. This, excuse me, this is all just ribbing and easy to do for the whole neck of the scarf. So to close up the flap, I'm just going to work the first row as the pattern tells me to, maintaining the ribbing. And you'll see as I work this, that flap is closing up. See, there we go. Those are really all of the techniques you need to be able to make the eye to neck wrap. You will knit the second tuck flap as you did the first and you'll do the shaping on the second petal just backwards from the first one you did. It's all spelled out in the pattern. Uh, the last thing you'll want to do is to weave in your ends and block it and it's ready to go. Oh, I should tell you, this can fit really anyone. I found that for my neck, 14 inches of scarf is just about right, but if you're knitting for someone younger or someone with a bigger neck, you'll just want to adjust that neck size to make it fit them. Good luck.